When I first started thinking of Mission 3, I wanted more from the character and the story. You know, we talked about bringing the team together and, and having that whole, you know, feel of the picture and, and wanting it to have a romantic quality, but a toughness and have it be a love story. I got this phone call and it was my agent and he said, uh, are you aware of the discussions about you directing Mission Impossible 3? <laughs> I said, what? I was working on Mission Impossible and I was up at about two in the morning one night and I just said, oh, I'm gonna watch Alias. So I just started watching Alias. I was blown away by what he accomplished. His sense of uh, timing, suspense. I thought, you know what? I want J.J. Abrams to direct the movie. The next night I went to Paula Wagner's house to meet her and Tom and I walk in and Tom's there and he just gives me that huge smile and he's like, do you wanna do it? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? It's like the greatest opportunity in the world. Day one, it's not raining, we're in Rome. This is the first shot. Our first day of photography here in Rome on the Tiber River, the high speed boat. Just got in yesterday, got it unloaded, and everybody's here, all the equipment's here, and we're ready to shoot. We all had sort of near misses where shit was gonna go wrong in this thing, but you guys in classic Mission Impossible form pulled it off, so it would be nice if there was some either mockery about each other, you know what I mean? Because this is very much a celebration. Let's do it, man. I looked at JJ and I knew this is his first day of his first feature film. It was actually kind of emotional for me, really, because here's a man that I have such respect for and who deserves this more than anybody. We have a Zodiac speedboat with four safety divers. Two police boats. One police boat is locking this end of the river. The other boat is locking that end. 11 all cameras. Stop is 11 all rounds. Stand by. And roll all cameras, please. Roll all cameras. And action! I was a little bit nervous. Uh, I had no reason to be. Tom's really good in a speedboat, but for an actor who's never worked with him before, jumping into a speedboat and being thrown about the river is a little bit scary. But it was a really, really easy way to break into doing Mission Impossible because the four of us got to sit in the boat and really bond with each other. It was good. Day one was incredibly surreal because suddenly we were shooting this movie and to be shooting in Rome with Tom Cruise on this boat in the Tiber. Yeah, it was nuts. I would never directed a movie before. And the crew is huge. I mean, there are more people on the crew than I'd ever certainly, you know, met in my life. And so it was just, it, you know, not only was the, was the crew huge, they're so good at their job that they made me feel incredibly safe. It's just right from the beginning, I could feel it, it was going well. It'd be impossible for anyone to think that it was his first time on a movie. And then when we went down to Caserta, that was a blast. We're at uh, Caserta Palace. It was a palace built just about an hour and a half outside of Rome as sort of a second capital. And it's doubling today as the Vatican. Italy. <laughs> Tom. Location. 50 foot wall, top of the wall. This stunt is Ethan Hunt entering the Vatican. Done a shot, even running up the wall. You know, it's quite an interesting shot. He starts vertical, runs up the wall horizontal, gets to the top. We had to create the Vatican at Caserta. And what we did is we built this 40-some foot wall. It ended up actually serving two purposes. We shot one side of the wall for Rome. At the top of the wall, we actually shot in Rome. For the reverse, we shot in Caserta, looking toward Caserta as the Vatican. When he goes down, we went back to that first side of the wall, redressed to be the interior side. So it's, it's a very scary stunt. And when you roll off the edge, I promise you, it's a leap of faith. There's a lot of people who think you can do it standing here, and you get to the top and you look. And when you roll off, you're putting your life totally in other people's hands. He wasn't stopping fast enough. And Tom and I were like, you know, we gotta speed it up. They said, well, we can't really speed it up because if you, if you speed it up too much, it'll bounce. So we're filming the last one and, and he drops and it's significantly quicker. Yeah, that's sexy. Oh, yeah, are you kidding? Yeah. He hit the ground. Now, I, I couldn't tell how hard he hit truly an inch away, you know, from a huge disaster. Tom, of course, just started laughing because he thought it was, it was the greatest thing ever. That's the greatest. Let's shoot it. What do you think? <laughs> well, Colleen is amazing. 
like Colleen Atwood is the woman, but that dress is all her. I knew this scene was taking place in Italy, so I wanted it to have sort of a homage to the great Italian modern designers like Versace, mainly Cavalli, Armani. But having to function the way dresses have to function in movies, I decided to make it myself. And I wanted it to be a dress that was a head-turner dress. Well, there was one little incident when Maggie was, was pulling in in her shoe, which I think was like this, the heel was like huge, got stuck in the accelerator and she ended up hitting a car in front of her and she was very embarrassed. So I'm sorry, I'm repeating that. But um, she did an amazing job. Leave it to me to go from not driving to a Lamborghini. JJ and them were like, oh, you can drive a stick shift, right? Sports car, fast. And I'm going, um, yeah, <laughs> well, I could learn, you know? We had two cars standing by for that. We had the car that we blew up, and we actually had another version of the car that was essentially a shell, and we had that actually in a, um, a stage at Paramount Studios, sitting atop the set of the sewer. What's up? The final thing we wanted to do at Caserta, which again seemed a very, very tall order, was to uh, blow up the sports car apart from convincing the authorities that we could do it without damaging the building in any way. Just how you get that explosion right in that area is incredibly complex. We're in Caserta, we're gonna do a stunt. So hopefully uh, everything will go well. We're kind of in a sensitive area here. This building is very old and we don't want to damage it. Every little event has to be well, orchestrated. You have to cut the roof a certain way so it breaks a certain way. We're gonna start scoring the car. So this way when the mortars hit the roof, we're going to have uh, the car opening. Shotgun mortar is what we call it. Uh, so it's very directional, and it'll take and pop this uh, trunk lid, and we have a chain to restrain it. The car will explode and burn. And what we did, actually, is the cast of the actual floor is a fiberglass. And underneath, we are putting, actually, sand, try to, to protect as much as possible the, the place here. Because, uh, National Monument. Well, hopefully we'll have at least seven, possibly nine or ten cameras, whatever we can get for the explosion. This is purposely the very last thing we're shooting here. Because if this was the first thing, I don't think we would have been allowed to shoot anything else. Pull the car. <sighs> Such a nice car. Day three of our America part of the shoot. We finished Italy. This is one part of a two-part location in Rykoff in southeast LA. Ethan Hunt and Lindsay jump out of that building on a cable and land on a truck. Tom goes in there and uh, inexplicably chooses to jump off, smash into, fight with. I mean, whatever the thing, he does all that stuff. The fact that he's also able to and, and oddly willing is just a gift to the you know, filmmakers and the audience because those scenes have a legitimacy that they would not have had had we had a stuntman do it and pasted Tom's face on him or some other digital trick. Four mortars in each window. They're loaded with balsa wood, gasoline, and a black powder lifter. We expect the gasoline to come out probably halfway across the alley. The balsa wood should be on fire and come three quarters to all the way across the alley. We don't want to have anybody in that area. We want to have it cleared out. Everybody should be back in this area here. So where did Carrie and I go again? <laughs> There's a little flourish, and that's stuff that JJ and I kind of found on the day. And we kind of find this cool moment. It looks like a little move, but it's really high. If you make a mistake, you're coming off that truck. You know, you get rolled over, you could fall off and hurt something. One time I kind of skidded out a little too far, and he grabbed me. You know, he's, he's very, I don't know, he's just very safe doing all that stuff. Like you know, Tom's been amazing in working with uh, with the actors. Uh, he's so used to doing his stunt work. And Carrie's very new to it, so he was really helpful in terms of, sort of the timing of it, the rhythm of it, the confidence you know, to do it. The only problem that I have to say about Tom, seriously, here's the biggest problem with Tom, honestly. I'm, I'm not kidding. 
No enthusiasm. <laughs> It was my dream to work with ILM. The whole team at ILM, I am in awe of them. We are shooting a miniature helicopter for one of the shots in the, what we call the helicopter chase sequence. And in pursuit, the bad guy helicopter emerges out of a fireball, and that's what we're shooting this evening. Roger Guyette is the greatest. He knows how to take the practical realities of how and where and what we're shooting and fill in the blanks and create you know, what's missing. Phenomenal on every level the amount of work that went into it uh, from every department. But that's what these movies are like. You look at the effort and, and what, what was accomplished, which is something that we, I think we all have uh, a lot to be proud of. We're now on the interior of the building that is the extraction building, as we call it. It's where Ethan Hunt comes in and rescues the girl that has been captured. We've shot the exteriors, as you saw last week, and now we're doing the interiors. So this is downtown LA. This is literally an empty building next to Pitchable Market in LA. We shot the Rykoff building, where we shot the pilot of Alias, and Scott and his team dressed the interior of that to look like this old factory. It's an amazing thing when you see it. All of these huge water heaters and lifts and these all this machinery and chains and everything, it's, it's all either wood or, or plastic and it looks just ancient, rusted metal and it, they were incredible, the work that those guys did. It was a shell, it was painted white, there wasn't a whole lot of anything in here. The paint alone is layer upon layer upon layer upon layer to bring it down to the grunge level that we're talking about. It was a great looking location. It was a tricky location. We're dealing with full flash blanks, we're dealing with glass breaking, we're dealing with explosions. And we did a bunch of stunts here. We're finishing up this one shootout scene now. A lot of safety meetings. So if you need earplugs, please get them. If you're wearing them now, please take them out so you can listen to the safety meeting. And Tom has a machine gun. It's like on these concrete walls. It's just like reverberating. We each had 30 rounds in one scene. You're sweating, you're slipping, your glass is breaking. I mean, it's like, it was crazy. I'm as tired as I look, but we were able to do all the scenes that we needed to do uh, in a pretty condensed schedule. Cut! Well, we're almost halfway through the shoot. We're shooting in Calabasas, California, uh, in this bridge sequence. We were discussing actually shooting it on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge in Virginia. I don't think it would have been possible to do the stunts on the actual bridge. There's just no margin for error. I realized once I had, you know, had the sequence finished and written and, and pre-visualized, we could get away with a lot of cheats in terms of not seeing the water. So we looked around and found this location in Calabasas, and they let us build this strip of road part of the superstructure of this bridge and let us shoot there. And Scott Chambliss, our production designer, basically created the set for us to do the entire sequence. The one stunt I think that he impressed me as much as anything on the bridge was when he's running away from a rocket hit on one of the vehicles, the force of the explosion lifts Tom up and throws him into one of the parked vehicles that's been abandoned. So I know that I have to run at a full speed and I just have to get out of my mind that anything's gonna happen, at which point they pull the trigger and I get slammed in the car. And he really hit it and he went in there horizontally and as I said at the time, if any stuntman on the bridge there had that shot on their resume, they'd be very, very proud of it as a stunt. It was, it was a hit. Oh, oh yeah, because God. you feel that yeah, yeah, pressure you feel blow. Oh my God, that is so good. That's a great day's work, man. <laughs> it's cool because the way he's running, the look on his face before, during, and after that impact could only have been done by an actor as good as Tom. It was a really cool combination of a practical set, practical stunts, special effects, and visual effects all working together, and I think that a lot of it will look like a lot more than just the stunts. It's the work that the pyrotechnic guys did, the work that ILM did on, on that sequence, but the, the dream was that it just sort of all feels like it's really happening, and you don't understand the machinations of sort of how it was done, but it was a, it, it really took the, you know, synchronizing of a lot of departments and really talented people to sort of all pull off the one ultimate, you know, illusion. When we were looking at what the sequence was, we came up with this idea 
to have this thing happen with these three buildings, having never seen three, the three buildings. We just imagined, all right, there'll be, the, there'll be three buildings and we'll do it. And the idea was for Tom to run and jump and swing out here and land on this rooftop. And that's what you'll see in the film, except it will be blue screen and plates is how we'll accomplish that. And the main reason for that was there are no other buildings around. If you can see this big picture back here, the real buildings, there were no camera positions, so everything would have had to have been shot by helicopters. And it was a massive undertaking to light it. For the large jump that Tom is doing on the top of the building, uh, which is at the top of the parking structure uh, behind us here, that is a section of the roof in Shanghai, China that was built. And we did a very elaborate helicopter move in Shanghai where the camera comes in and then goes around Ethan as he's standing on top of the roof. For this particular sequence, uh, Tom won't be on the top of the Shanghai roof, but we, you know it will certainly look as though he was. And then we'll come over his shoulder and look down at the ground. So we'll see Tom Cruise on the top of the Shanghai building, 700 feet in the air, and just to show and set up the jeopardy of what he's about to accomplish. You got 18 minutes. You're gonna make it over there. You're gonna find a rabbit's foot, get back to the roof, radio me when you're ready to make the jump, and we're gonna come get you. Thank you for coming. That's my job. Tom actually chose to do this run and this jump. He had to walk up to the edge of the building, look over and say, okay, I'm gonna jump out into space over there. It allowed us to start on him let him perform this moment, you know, of gearing up, and then hooked him onto the cable. He just went back 30 paces and just ran and launched himself into space. It allowed us to follow him as he went off. So you're constantly thinking, is the cable strong enough? Is this the time that wire is going to break? Was the harness really secure? You know, again, the stunt team was incredibly qualified. Having said that, there are eight million things going on in your mind. Like, any of these things could literally ruin all of our days pretty quickly. The last week or so, we've been doing the Shanghai Street Chase. We use Lower Grand, which is a, a pretty familiar location spot for filming Los Angeles, which Scott Chambliss, production designer, and his whole crew have, with some details, some subtle and some not so subtle, transformed into downtown Shanghai. We shot a lot of the action stuff, you know, when Tom leans out of the car and shoots, and once again with Tom doing it. And this shot will have real TC out the car hanging. Fighting back or 16 rounds. Okay, that's where you want to be. That feel okay? Yep. Okay, now, the trick is getting back in. He'll actually lean out of a car at some insanely dangerous angle in order to shoot a gun under a truck. And it adds a level of realism and emotion and excitement to what I think would otherwise be a little more generic. This will be Tom Cruise in the middle of the road in the laying down position. The truck will come towards him, jackknife sideways. The truck passes right over him. He's, he's between the axles. There's not a lot of room, but that's obviously what makes the danger angle, you know? Yes, yep. we've, we've built this delivery to make it. It's good. I didn't have lunch, so. Yeah. To some degree, we all sort of saw our careers flash before our eyes. All speeds and all powers. Action. For the first take, I was standing up the hill by one of the cameras and it seemed forever the truck was just driving straight at him, straight at him. It just looked more inspiring from where I was. <laughs> Again, another gray hair. I would much rather actually be Tom in the road than the guy driving the truck. Can you imagine being the guy driving the truck over Tom Cruise? Because, yeah, it would be a real bummer if you ate it, you know, in the middle of the road. But to be the guy driving that truck, that, that's like, that's worse. That was great. That was pretty good. Go to the big. Musk Cut. Beautiful. Cut it. Very nice. I've been doing a little bit of gun training, which has been an absolute ball. I highly recommend that to everybody. This would be another example of an actor doing their own stunts. You see that it, it helps the film if you're the guy actually involved. And action. It's pretty exciting watching playback and that you're actually in the middle of this amazing fight scene with Tom Cruise. There's a bit of a thrill about doing it too, and that's exciting.
I've enjoyed working with Tom and Philip. And I love JJ's work. He's so detail oriented and he likes to keep pushing the envelope. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah, we're very close. Oh man. China. Welcome to Shanghai. I've been looking at pictures, but I haven't been here before. So to actually be here is sort of remarkable. I keep saying it's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. And that's sort of my first impression, it's unbelievable. Yeah, this will never work. That was so good. It was amazing shooting in China, especially Chitang, I have to say, because it was, you know, this thousand year old fishing village, and we had this incredible, you know, technology. The camera rig we were using, the spider cam, was such a high-tech device. Spider cam is basically a bunch of uh, rigging equipment. It's not just uh, one system that we put up. So if somebody has a vision or a shot, we build infrastructure to get our system up in the air, and then uh, we program the shot after that. We have a, a, a high-tension cable. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually a synthetic rope um, that hangs up, up on top, and we have a little, little skate, we call it, that runs back and forth along that. We have another loop that goes through that moves the camera up and down. The one stunt I think that probably was the most difficult may not look like that. He was jumping off rooftops. Now these were tile roofs. It required incredible grace, precision, coordination, and footwork. And it looked so effortless. Where's your playback, please? That was tricky. First of all, it was the third to last day shoot of the movie. And then that final day of the sprint, I couldn't wait to do that sprint. Casting these people, they are, they're, really, they're, they're the real villagers. They're not extras, so we have to tell each person what to do. They don't know, they've never seen movie making before. Stand by, please. So please tell everyone again, I'll be coming through much faster. Uh, 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 just make sure when I come out, I'll be going very fast. He's running full out for probably 1,100 feet, and we're doing 16, 17 miles an hour. Uh, it's it's going to be pretty fantastic. Here we go. Roll sign, please. Roll cameras. The fun never eased up. The adventure, the creativity never eased up. It, it seemed to ramp up and accelerate too as the challenges we faced one right after the other. All of us, the whole crew, working together to solve these problems and create this movie together. It was such a pleasurable experience. One day left, really. When I'm shooting on location, I'm always thinking, I want to make sure that I capture the, the place. And Shanghai is just, it's remarkable. This location we're shooting, it's this raised neighborhood where I'm sure they're going to put up a huge skyscraper in about two months. That kind of captures the look of the city because it's, it's this demolished area with this futuristic city in the background. And we ended up finishing a day ahead of schedule in China, which, you know, we were all planning for probably a day later, you know, and that was due to teamwork. I say, man, this is, this is, I'll never forget this moment. Maggie has wrapped, Bing Rains has wrapped, Jonathan has wrapped. Thank you very much. It is incredibly satisfying to have worked so hard and to see the results of, of our efforts. And I couldn't help but just think of just how happy I am for JJ. You know, I was looking, here's your first film. And what a great filmmaker he is. It's embarrassing. When we actually wrapped here, before we went to China, um, and Tommy said it's a wrap, I literally, totally unexpectedly, felt like crying. Like, I swear to God, it's so embarrassing. I was like, oh my God, I, I have, where the hell is this emotion coming from? It was the craziest thing. His first film, he's just making a little movie, you know? <laughs> and I'm ready. Now I can't see. So then, 
we go to China and we're shooting and he calls rap and I'm like, I'm on the roof of this apartment complex in Shanghai with these people who, you know, have been together for, you know, months and months and months. And it was just, it was such a surreal experience having shot this movie at all. But to begin in Rome, to end in China, you know, in Shanghai, uh, and, and to have worked with and come to love this group that was so dedicated and so hardworking and, and the only reason we finished early, you know, and under schedule and under budget, I mean, th they were so good. And here we are with this little bird flipping away in the cage and we're looking out over Shanghai and all these people standing and looking up and the whole crew on top of this building and we finished our last shot and that's a wrap and everybody, you know, hugged and embraced because it's that moment when we go, we did it. And Jets, that is the end of the amazing Mr. Tom Cruise! <laughs> JJ rapped also? <laughs> and that is the end of the amazing Mr. JJ Abram! <laughs> that was a fun night, you know? And I was sad. It was like, oh, really? You know, all of a sudden it was over. It seemed like we just started and and it was over, you know? But it was beautiful. <laughs>